some song for a Bible. I need to sing a Bible. Who is the Bible? <laughs> telephone is not a Bible, okay? Telephone is not a Bible. Telephone is a telephone. A Bible is a Bible. Amen. Yes. That's the RG of my Bible. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, uh, before we start, I would like to ask Mr. Grumberg to come. Uh, this is my very handsome husband. <laughs> and I have a covenant with him that whenever I share God's word anywhere, everywhere, anytime, he has to pray for me because this is a very anointed. Heavenly Father, we just give you all the glory this morning and all the praise. And we ask you to come down right during this service and just ask you to anoint my wife, anoint her tongue so that she can speak the word that you have reserved for this day. And uh, give the message to everyone here. That they will all be blessed. In Jesus' name, we ask the Holy Spirit to come to fire and just bless everyone here. Put a message to you again this morning. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Amen. Amen. So I was asking to For the press, I mean the people, 
because he was little of stature. Little of stature is just a political correct word for being short. Anak putut. <laughs> so here it is the first one and the first two and verse three of Luke 19 is the resume. This is the CV of Zacchaeus. First he was what? He was a publican, a top publican, chief publican. Number two, he was rich. And number three, he was short. Now I am a very short woman. But there is nothing unusual about me because everybody else in Philippines are short. So I belong to the normal people. The two people here are not normal. <laughs> I am I belong to the what you call the, the beautiful short people. And it says here whenever the Bible talks about height, then it is either that the person is very tall or the person is very short. Because so when somebody, uh, for example, they wrote an announcement to me in the, in the, in the website and say, Lila Grandberg coming, they did not say that Lila Grandberg, 46 years old and a short person from Philippines, no. Because normally, I am just a normal short person. But for the Bible to mention that Sakinus was a short man, then he must be very short. Okay? To specifically say that he was a short man, then he must be a very short man. Correct? Yes. Because if he's just normally short, there are a lot of short people in the world, they are not being mentioned as a short man. But this is, the Bible specifically said he was a short man, and I have an idea that either he was a court box, or he was near a court box. Because the Bible will not say that he was short if he's just normally short. It was specifically mentioned that he was short because he was very short. And you see, the Bible talks here that he tried to see Jesus, but he could not. Me, if there's a suit in my parade there, all I have to do is stand on my knees, crane my neck like that, and everything is okay. I can see what is going on in the tongue. But for Zacchaeus to see Jesus, he had to climb up a tree, which means he was really very short. Are we agreeing that? He was really very short. Now you have to remember, at this time, this is the biblical time. The people were not so civilized as today. In fact, People with imperfections are considered outcasts in the society. In the time of Jesus, in the Bible times, people who are short walls, people with deformities, they're considered cursed. And they're considered outcasts of the society. They're not included. They're somewhere else. They're separated. They do not belong to the normal society because there's something wrong with them. In fact, if you look at throughout history, court books people, they're considered as court jester. Yung uh, ano, comedic, uh, what you call that, relief. Yung mga clowns in the court of the kings. They were made as clowns, as some kind of comic relief. The short peoples are being made like that. And even today, they are in the circus, right? For, for being short, for being funny. Now, Zacchaeus was a very short man, but it says there that he was a top chief publican. That's something. That's really something. In the Bible, I was reading this morning what does publican means, because in NIV it says that he was the chief tax collector. That's bad enough. <laughs> there you go. It's not that it is bad enough to be a tax collector, but it says that Zacchaeus was a top publican. What is a publican? A publican is a, a group of people in the days of Jesus who are middle.
legal man for the Roman government. Okay? Do you understand? They are the what you call the, the middle man. They collect money from the Jewish people and give it to, to the Roman government. If the Roman government, they're going to have a project in the city to build maybe a new temple, a new shop, or whatever, they are the contractors. They're always the middle man. And then whenever there is they're, they're not all, all they're not also collector of tax, but they also work as custom, no? Bureau of custom. Whenever there's a new ship coming to Israel, they always go to the publicans to pay. To pay. Okay? So, publicans, number one, they're rich. Number two, they're very corrupt. Number three, they are hated by everyone. No? The, the Jewish society hates publicans. They really hate this kind of people because they are extortionists and they are very corrupt. And then they see these people as traitors because they're working for the Romans and the Romans were ruling over the Jewish people. So they look at the publicans as traitor, corrupt, extortionists, etc., etc. They don't like this group of people, the publicans. And here is Zacchaeus, a very short man, and then a top publican of all things. And that's so good in so many areas, but there's something very impressive about Zacchaeus, which you come to think about it. Because in the Bible, many, many, many times, many times, people are being judged by their appearance. Today, uh, there's issues of gender equality, of being racist, and everything like that. We have to be careful not to offend everybody. But in the Bible, they're very frank. If you're ugly, you're called ugly in those days. And then, they're very, uh, what you call that, conscious of appearance. When somewhere, no, not somewhere, when King Saul in the Old Testament was chosen to be as king by the people. He was chosen because one, he was tall, and two, he was handsome. Even God says, no, I don't want you to have a king, because I will be your king. The people say, no, we want to have a king, and we want Saul to be the king because he was tall, and he was handsome, okay? And when, 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 when prophet Samuel went to look for another king to replace King Saul, he went to a man called Jesse, and Jesse had seven sons, and when they looked at all these handsome, tall sons, Samuel was thinking, hmm, maybe God is going to uh, pick one of these handsome men. Now they're very presentable, tall, handsome men. And God's like, no, don't look at the appearance. I look into the heart. And they're very prejudiced in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, they're very prejudiced. They love people with good appearance. And even today, especially in my country, I was just watching a documentary just recently, this whitening uh, procedures by Bello. <laughs> We have this very expensive whitening procedure because most of the people say that if you have lighter skin than Philippines, your chances of going higher up are bigger. Appearance, 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 appearance. And if it's bad today, it's ten times worse in the biblical times. But there's one thing about Zacchaeus. He managed to be on the top. This guy is a leader. Court books. But he managed to be on top. Zacchaeus probably is a very smart guy. He probably went to university and studied accounting and law. Because the, in, in, in somewhere here in, in verse uh, 8, he said, and those people whom I have cheated by uh, giving false accusation. Now, if you can't give false accusation, you have to be very good in law. You have to be a bit of a lawyer to give false accusation.
conversation, right? So Zacchaeus was a very smart guy because he can manipulate the law and he must be very good in accounting because he is a tax collector. He was a very smart guy and he was a winner in so many ways because he was able to overcome his circumstances as being a sure man. No, I, it cannot be, it not, it's not easy to be a top, top publican if you are a short man. So Zacchaeus was a winner, okay? There's two things in life. There's two kinds of reaction, circumstances in life. Number one, you have the victim mentality, or number two, you are a winner, okay? So he used to have said, okay, I'm a short person, the last nothing could happen to me. I will just sit here and beg. Beg for money. Right? So he used to have said, ah, oh, society, they owe me because look at me, I can't do anything. I'm short people, I'm an outcast. I will never allow anyone to look at me 
Jesus in our lives. We are not less. We can fly over our situations. Correct? So even though we are short, we can do bigger things, right, Maritas? <laughs> He was a winner in spite of his situation. And I pray this morning that even though no matter what, how bad everything is around your life, you can do better. You can always do better. And then, what happened? One day, Jesus was passing through Jericho. And Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming. And then, in all the excitement, Zacchaeus ran. He probably forgot all his money on the table. He ran to see Jesus. Not anymore as your provider, not anymore. 
or as your dream giver, not as your helper, but who I am. Love me as who I am. You have to know me all over again. Now you have everything, but can you see that all these things cannot give you joy? Cannot give you peace? Then I am your peace. I am your joy. Know me in this matter. Know me in this matter. And it's the king of life. He has everything. The Bible even says he has family. He has money, so he can find himself a beautiful wife. He can buy a beautiful wife. In those days, you can buy a beautiful wife. You just can go to the market and buy a beautiful things. You have a beautiful wife. He has family, so there's nothing lacking in him. He has money, he has position, he has family. What more could he ask for? Maybe he could ask to be a little bit taller, but there's nothing he can do about it. But when he heard that Jesus was passing through, he ran because there's something missing inside. Something missing inside. And again, I have to say it again and again and again. Money, position, wealth, faith, whatever, it cannot give you the one you are looking for inside. It is like this. When God made man, He made our heart as though there is a kind of hole in it. You can fill it with education, you can fill it with, with cars, with houses, with shoes, with new iPhone, whatever it is, Tesla car, whatever. That hole will never be filled up because God made that hole specifically for Him alone to fill. Only Him can fill that void and emptiness inside. And this is what Zacchaeus is looking for. He had come, he had, he had victory in his life. He can even write a book and say how to overcome circumstances and be the person you want to be. He can write a book like that because he had lived a victorious life because he had overcome the circumstances being a short guy. He could have written a self-help book and said how to overcome circumstances and yet here is the man who feels that something is lacking. And that lacking is Jesus. He left his busy day. He left his assignment and ran to see Jesus. The problem is he was the short man. So he had to climb a tree. And this is where I can see that actually Zacchaeus was not liked by anybody at all. Because me, when I go somewhere and try to go into the crowd, people think me a little bit and say, okay, you pass. Okay? Oh, they open places for me because I'm a short little woman. I say, okay, okay, you're going. People are nice that way. But Zacchaeus, he, he tries, but people are not giving him away into the crowd. So it speaks to us that nobody likes to stand. So, but it does not stop him. He ran up to the tree and climbed there. There, he saw the best view of Jesus. From the distance, he saw Jesus coming closer and closer and closer. Maybe when he was sitting there, he saw Jesus stepping by to heal the blind, a blind man. Maybe when he was sitting there, he saw Jesus stepping by to make a lame man walk. Because this is what Jesus do. He helped those who cannot walk to walk. He helped the blind to see. He helped those who are deaf to hear again. Maybe when he was sitting there on the tree, on the up on the sycamore tree, he was looking at all the miracles that Jesus was doing as he was walking 
Why? Because Jesus was not too busy to stop when somebody needs him. So he was looking at Jesus at the distance and he saw how he was helping the people one by one, those who are me. And while Zacchaeus was sitting there, his heart probably was starting to be, my goodness, this is the man I need. This is the man I can be friends with. This is the very person I am looking for. Maybe he was starting to feel excitement and very hopeful, but at the same time, he probably was thinking, well, I don't even know he even looked up at me, or I don't even know he was seeing me, and I don't even know he cares about me. I am a sinner, I am a cheater. I'm a thief. I steal money from people. But he was sitting there and his heart was maybe beating more and more as Jesus came closer and closer and closer. You know how it feels? Jesus is walking here this morning, this afternoon. And if your heart is beating fast this afternoon, it means you're excited as well for his touch. And this is what Zacchaeus is sitting. He he did not he did not think of how funny it looks like for a man sitting on a tree. He did not. He was not thinking of maybe I look ridiculous here. Maybe I look funny up here. But no, his focus was on Jesus. He was so fascinated with this man who was coming nearer and nearer to him. And maybe his heart was really really. Screaming, my goodness, I want this man. I want this man in my life. And so Jesus got closer and closer and closer. And when he came near the tree, Everything he knows about us. The Bible says he even counts 
the hair of our heads one by one by one he knows that so every time he looks at us he knows everything but the good news is he looks beyond our fault and so our needs in Zacchaeus case he looks at Zacchaeus and he did not say that he was a thief he did not say that he was a cheater he did not say that he was a dishonest man or a traitor to the people what he saw was the need in Zacchaeus heart that day he saw the need the hunger and the tears inside Zacchaeus heart And I pray this morning because the Bible says, Blessed are those who tears, and blessed are those who are hungry for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. If you come here this morning feeling so self satisfied about yourself, God cannot meet your need. But if you come here this morning feeling like, Lord, I need to meet you. I need to know you. I need what you have. I can promise you, he will come. He will come. He will come. Look at what the Bible said. It's circumstantial. 
Okay? When the weather is fine, wow, happy. When there is not fine, which is the case in the slum, not so happy. And the Bible says, the kingdom of God is joy. What's the difference with joy and happiness? Joy comes from the inside. It does not depend on the outside. And this is something I have to remind again and again and again about myself because every time I look at the window and swimming, then my my happiness goes to zero. And in this lana, this is a very common occurrence of the day. We just look at storm that in all for one week and then our happiness measure is down to the bottom. The Bible says, joy. He received Jesus joyfully. Joyfully. Only Jesus can give us joy. I do that because joy is J. Joy. The world cannot give us joy. Again and again and again because for me this is a 
very beginning of my life. When she came home that day from this retreat, from the distance, I saw my mother like she was floating in glorious atmosphere. The person I have never seen smile or laugh for many, many years was smiling from ear to ear. And there was some kind of special glow around again. And I couldn't understand what it was. And the nearer she came to me, bringing her thoughts along, the more powerful was the, the aura around her. This joyful aura, this, this magnificent aura about her. And I just couldn't stand it. The more, she, the closer she came to me, the stronger it was. And at the time she was standing near me, my tears, 12 years old, I was 12 years old at the time, my tears started falling. I hold my mother's hand and say, whatever it is you got, I want it. It was the joy of the Holy Spirit. It was the transformation of the Holy Spirit in my mother's life. I didn't understand it, but I just hold and grab her hands and say, whatever it is that you have, I want it. And this is what Zacchaeus is feeling this morning. From, from the time Jesus looked up to him in the tree, he was so filled with the Holy Spirit, he came down with joy. From a man full of sadness and emptiness, sitting on the top of the tree, he came down as a man full of joy. There was a transformation in his life. A total transformation in Zacchaeus' life. And if you want the transformation this morning, run to Jesus. Run to Him. There is joy waiting in Jesus. And then He said, Jesus, no, we spend so much time trying to make a person change. Who are married people here? Raise your hands. Married people here. We tried so hard many years, many to change our husband, many to change our wives, and we have never changed because we're never supposed to change anybody. People are sent to jail for being a thief, for being uh, what I don't know they have done in order for them so that they will change. People are sent to uh, rehab, rehabilitation. If they have drug addiction, pornography, whatever, they go to psychiatry, they go to rehabilitation, they change. But I can tell you, there is one person who can change you just like that, and that is Jesus. Amen. He says here, Jesus, I will give half of my wealth. Immediate transformation. And he said, if I have stolen from somebody, I will give him back how many times? Can you help me out with this? Four times. Zacchaeus so had stolen a lot of money from a lot of people. And he said, if I have stolen from somebody by false accusation, I will pay this person four times. We pay so much money for psychiatrists, for rehabilitation, for everything so that a person can change. But the only person who can really change us from the inside it is Jesus. Suddenly, wealth doesn't matter to Zacchaeus anymore. He found something greater. Something more important. And something more precious. What did the Bible say? Those who find kingdom of life, the kingdom of God is like a man who bought a land, like who found a pearl, right? Who found a pearl in a land. And then because this person says he sold everything and bought the land. Because he found something more precious. As a kid has found something far greater than wealth, success that day, and that is Jesus. I want you all to stand up with me. And I don't know, I 
will not beg you to come. I will not beg you to, to be with me in prayers. But I will just ask you this morning. Jesus is passing through. And he looks at us. He does not look our failures. Yes, he sees it. He does not look of our he does not look at our mistakes. Yes, he sees it. He does not look at our sins, although he knows it. He does not look at our failures, although he is aware of it. But he only looks at the heart of his sin. He looks at the heart who longs for him. He looks at the heart who seeks him. Yeah. 